Okay, today's video is all about the lymphatic drainage of the stomach and to understand that we have to know about the location and the names of the lymph nodes. So on the first segment of this video we are going to show you different kinds of lymph nodes of the stomach with their um, locations. And this is my hand-drawn illustration for you guys and uh, in this picture uh, this is the stomach this is the liver on the left side and on the right side we have the spleen and behind the stomach we can see we have the pancreas and uh, these are the arteries that are supplying the stomach the red color thing the green colored structures these are the lymph nodes of the stomach these lymph nodes are named according to the arteries present there or on the basis of their location. We will see that in about a minute. So this is the abdominal aorta. We can see uh, the red structure. Uh, and uh, on the front side of the abdomen, we have the ventral branch. And uh, this is known as the celiac trunk. A group of lymph nodes is present here known as the celiac nodes. So in front of the celiac trunk, we have the celiac nodes. This is the main group of the lymph nodes. So all the lymph nodes of the stomach, they ultimately drain into this group of lymph nodes, the celiac nodes, I mean. So if we know about the arteries of the stomach, then it will be easier for us to remember the lymph nodes. Let us see. So on the left side of the stomach, we have the left gastric artery. So this is the left gastric artery. And the lymph nodes present here are known as the left gastric nodes. So the left gastric artery and the nodes are left gastric nodes. And behind the stomach we showed you that we have the pancreas and this is the spleen as I showed you before. And this is the tail of the pancreas which is related to the spleen. So this junction is known as the pancreaticosplenic junction. And the group of the lymph nodes that are present here, I mean at the pancreaticosplenic junction, are known as the pancreaticosplenic nodes. These are named according to their location. And then on the lower part of the stomach, on the greater curvature, uh, we all know we have an artery here that is the right gastroepiploic artery, also known as the gastroumental artery, because uh, we know that the branches of this artery supplies the gastric, I mean the stomach, and also the omentum. So this artery is known as the right gastroumental artery. And this side, this is known as the right gastroepiploic artery. So the lymph nodes present here are obviously known as the right gastroepiploic nodes according to the name of the artery here. These are also known as the right gastroomental nodes. And below the pylorus of the stomach, we have the subpyloric nodes. These are named according to their location. Sub means below. So below the pylorus, we have the subpyloric nodes. We also have the hepatic nodes along the hepatic artery below the liver. So these are the hepatic nodes. So we found the left gastric nodes, then pancreaticosplenic nodes, then right gastroepiploic nodes, subpyloric nodes, and the hepatic nodes. And the thing we have to remember is that all these lymph nodes, they ultimately drain into this group of nodes, I mean into these celiac nodes. So we have showed you the uh, different kinds of lymph nodes with their locations in the first segment of the video. Now on the second part of this video, we are going to show you the lymphatic drainage of the stomach. And to describe that, we are removing all these extra structures. I've removed all those structures. Now I think we have a much better view. Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, I have collected this information from the BD Chorasia's Human Anatomy, Volume 2, 8th edition. So here, we have to divide the stomach into four parts. First, let us draw a line along the long axis of the stomach. And this line actually divides the stomach into two parts the right two-third and the left one-third. The right two-third covers most of the lesser curvature and the adjacent areas. And the left one-third is again divided into two portions, the upper portion and the lower portion. The upper portion of the left one-third includes the upper portion of the greater curvature and its adjacent areas. And the lower portion of the uh, left one-third includes the lower portion of the greater curvature and the adjacent areas. So the upper portion and the lower portion of the left one third. And below, if we draw a line here, then the part below this is the pyloric part that is formed by the pylorus of the stomach. So ultimately we have four areas, the right two third, the upper portion of the left one third, the uh, lower portion of the left one third, and also the pyloric part. So these four areas. Now the lymph from the right to the drains into the uh, left gastric nodes. 
and from the lymph gastric nodes the lymph again drains into the celiac nodes as we said that all the lymph nodes have a target that they have to reach the celiac nodes somehow and then if we talk about the upper portion of the right one third so this area drains into this group of lymph nodes that is the pancreaticosplenic nodes they're draining into their adjacent lymph nodes and by the rule this group of lymph nodes again drain into the celiac nodes now the lower portion of the left one third sorry uh, right one third the lower portion of the right or left this is left sorry 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 the lower portion of the left one third this area drains into the adjacent group of lymph nodes that is the right gastropipuloic nodes right gastropipuloic nodes then drain into the subpyloric nodes the lymph from these nodes then again drains into the hepatic nodes which again ultimately drains into the celiac nodes so the lymph from the right gastropipuloic nodes they also ultimately reach the uh, celiac nodes through the subpyloric nodes and the hepatic nodes anyways now the final part that is the pyloric part this is very special because lymph from this region actually drains into all directions it drains into the subpyloric nodes subpyloric nodes then drain into the hepatic node and from hepatic node the lymph reaches the uh, celiac nodes the pyloric region also drains into the hepatic nodes and um, that ultimately drains into the celiac nodes this region also drains into the left gastric nodes and from the left gastric nodes as we all know the lymph uh, reaches the celiac nodes ultimately as we all know that the ultimate goal is to reach the celiac nodes so we can see that lymph from the stomach through different uh, through many different groups of lymph nodes ultimately reaches the uh, celiac nodes now the celiac nodes drain the lymph into the intestinal lymph trunk which then again transports the lymph into the cisterna chile that is the uh, the largest lymphatic reservoir in the abdomen and lymph from the cisterna chile travels through the thoracic duct and uh, finally reaches the um, neck region more particularly if i say on the left venous angle that is the junction between the left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein you know the vein below the uh, clavicle subclavian vein so it reaches on the left side and also into the venous system thus the lymphatics from the stomach ultimately reaches the venous system so this is the total uh, lymphatic drainage of the stomach so we have finished the second segment of the video now on the third segment i'm going to tell you about the clinical importance of the lymphatic drainage okay now we saw that the uh, lymph of the stomach is drained into the celiac nodes and which then again drains into the intestinal lymph trunk and then to the cisterna chile and from the cisterna chile the lymph reaches the thoracic duct the thoracic duct then ascends through the thorax but at the level of the fifth thoracic vertebra it crosses from the uh, right side to the left side and continues up to the neck region in the neck region it arches laterally and downwards and opens into the junction between the left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein this is important to remember that it is draining on the left side of the neck and in the neck above the clavicle we have a group of lymph nodes that are known as the supraclavicular lymph nodes that means the lymph nodes which are situated above the clavicle so supraclavicular lymph nodes so on the left side we have the left supraclavicular lymph nodes so in case of gastric carcinoma i mean if the patient is suffering from the cancer then the cancer cell of the stomach ultimately drain into the celiac nodes then from celiac nodes the cancer cell um, enter into the intestinal lymph trunk and then cisterna chile and from there they reach the thoracic duct which then again travels uh, to the left side of the neck and then drain into the venous system right so the cancer cells are reaching from the stomach and through the thoracic duct they are reaching on the left side of the neck and we have the supraclavicular lymph nodes in this area so the cancer cells may uh, disseminate into these nodes uh, through the nearby lymphatic network and subsequently the cancer cells can lodge into this group of lymph nodes i mean into the left supraclavicular lymph nodes and if the lymph nodes are affected by the cancer cells then uh, these nodes become enlarged and they become palpable these are also known as the varicose nodes and if these nodes are enlarged and become palpable then we say that the trochier sign is positive so you can see these pictures that they're showing that uh, their left supraclavicular lymph nodes are enlarged 
here in this picture and then here also then this in these cases we can say that the left supraclavicular lymph nodes are enlarged and uh, pulp they are palpable of course so we can say that the Trosher sign is positive this sign is important because it indicates the metastasis of the cancer cells i mean uh, the spread of the cancer cells from the abdominal region so if the lymph nodes are palpable i mean if the Trosher sign is positive then further investigations are needed to confirm the diagnosis as soon as possible now you may ask that why the right supraclavicular lymph nodes are not enlarged uh, you can already see from this picture that the thoracic duct ultimately drains into the left side of the uh, neck region so they do not reach on the right side that is why it is easier to lodge into these nodes rather than on the right side yep so that is all so we showed you the lymphatic drainage and the varicose nodes and the trusher sign uh, in the third segment of the video now the fourth part of this video that is the mode of lymphatic drainage you can uh, skip this part but if you want to have a deeper and a clearer understanding about the lymphatic drainage and about the peculiarities then please keep watching it will not take much time i promise the information provided in this section is from the Essentials of Human Anatomy by A.K. Dattu, Thorax and Abdomen Portion, 9th edition. To understand the mode of the lymphatic drainage, we have to remember the four layers of the stomach. At first, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscle layer and the serosa. In the mucosa, on the top we have the lining epithelium and below the lining epithelium, this region, the connective tissue layer, this is known as the lamina propria and we have the tiny muscle layer here that is known as the muscularis mucosa. That means the muscle of the mucosa that is known as the muscularis mucosa. So the lining epithelium, the lamina propria and the muscularis mucosa. And uh, these are the gastric glands we can see. So these things now the lymphatic drainage of the stomach begins as the subepithelial lymphatic radicals so you can see the radicals here it has one blind end and from another end the efferent actually arises so these are the subepithelial lymphatic radicals here the subepithelial means below the epithelium as we know this is the epithelium so below the epithelium we have the subepithelial and radical means uh, the root-like structures. We can see that below the epithelium we have some root-like structures, so sub-epithelial. And um, of course, they're the lymphatic structures, so the sub-epithelial lymphatic radicals. So we can see the efferents from the subepithelial lymphatic radicals, they actually form a plexus around the glands. As we have showed you earlier that these are the glands, gastric glands I mean. So uh, they are forming the plexus around the glands and this plexus is known as the periglandular plexus. That means um, the plexus that is surrounding the glands. Here the peri means surrounding or around so the plexus which are surrounding the glands or they're around the glands are known as the periglandular plexus and the efferent from these plexus they uh, pierce or pierce whatever they actually cross the muscularis mucosa and enter into the submucosa and in this submucosa they form another plexus known as the submucous plexus now the efferents from the submucous plexus they enter into the muscle layer and in the muscle layer they again are forming another plexus known as the muscular plexus so this is the muscular plexus and the lymph vessels from the muscular plexus enter into the serosa and forms the subserous plexus. So here, this is the subserous plexus. So we have the subepithelial lymphatic radicals, then the uh, periglandular plexus. And from the periglandular plexus, we saw we have the submucous plexus. And after that, we have the muscular plexus and then we have the subserous plexus. Now the collecting lymph vessels from the subserous plexus, they drain into these group of lymph nodes. I mean on the left gastric nodes, the pancreaticus planic nodes, the right gastropipulic nodes, the pyloric nodes, the hepatic nodes and ultimately into the celiac nodes. And from the celiac nodes we know how the lymph again drains into the venous system. So this is the mode of the lymphatic drainage in details. So we have covered another segment. Now we have the final and the fifth segment of this video. That is the peculiarity of the lymphatic drainage. And for this, I'm using the Complete Anatomy app. The stomach is connected with the esophagus above and with the duodenum below. Now let us remove the layers and see here we have the, wait. 
yep after removing all these layers we can see that above we have the uh, cardiac orifice and below we have the pyloric orifice now the gastric lymphatics and the esophageal lymphatics are continuous with each other but below at the pyloric orifice the gastric lymphatics really communicates with the duodenal lymphatics because number one okay number one there is a connective tissue there is a connective tissue septum in the submucous of the pylorus and this connective tissue septum actually prevents the lymphatic flow from the stomach into the duodenum so we can see the connective tissue septum here so this is the thing and number two is the circular muscles of the stomach are not continuous with the circular muscles of the duodenum so let us zoom in and see Oops. zoom in and see uh, so yep these are the circular muscles you can see these structures the rounded things these are the circular muscles of the stomach and these are the longitudinal muscles of the stomach so inner circular and outer longitudinal muscles so the you can see the inner circular muscles they are not continuous with the uh, duodenum but above uh, we can see that the circular muscles of the stomach are continuous with the uh, uh, circular muscles of the esophagus Esophagus above so there is a continuity of the circular muscles between the esophagus and stomach but these muscles are not continuous so there is a discontinuity between the circular muscles between the stomach and the duodenum so this continuity of the circular muscle also plays a major factor for the lymphatic discontinuity between the stomach and the duodenum Number three, some longitudinal muscle fibers, they turn inward. So uh, as we have said earlier that this is the outer longitudinal muscle layer and we can see some fibers from that longitudinal muscle layer, they turn inward. So uh, this thing also causes the discontinuity of the lymphatic flow between the stomach and the duodenum. So we got three factors. Number one is the connective tissue septum that is present in the submucosa of the, um, um, what is that, pylorus. Number two is the discontinuity of the circular muscles of the stomach and the duodenum and the pylorus. And also number three, some inward folding of the longitudinal muscle fibers at the pylorus. So for these, so lymphatics of the stomach is not continuous with the duodenum. This is important because as the lymphatic drainage of the stomach is connected with the lymphatics of the esophagus above, the carcinoma of the stomach can easily spread into the esophagus through the lymphatics. But the carcinoma or the cancer cannot spread into the duodenum due to the lymphatic discontinuity. I mean the lymphatics are not continuous so the cancer of the stomach usually do not spread into the duodenum because of the barriers present here and we showed you the barriers the connective tissue septum then the discontinuity of the circular muscles and also the inward folding of the longitudinal muscles so they're acting as the barrier and they do not let the cancer to spread the uh, into the duodenum and also they're causing the discontinuity of the lymphatics and for that the cancer of the stomach are not spreading into the duodenum so a blessing in disguise I wish this blessing was present in the esophagus too. Anyway, scare Cora. So this explains why the carcinoma of the stomach can easily spread into the esophagus but usually does not spread into the duodenum. So that is all. In the first section of the video, we showed you the lymph nodes and uh, their locations and names. And the second section of the video, we showed you the lymphatic drainage. On the third section of the video, we described the importance of the lymphatic drainage and also the troches sign. On the fourth section, we have described the mode of the lymphatic drainage in details. And the fifth section of this video explains why the gastric carcinoma spreads into the esophagus but not into the duodenum. So, talked a lot today. Stay blessed, guys. My next video will be on the nerve supply of the stomach. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Oh, if you found this video helpful, then do not forget to like, comment, and share this video and subscribe my channel.